Everyone, this is Three Questions with Dr. Jared Smith. There you go, buddy. Here we go. I got nice. everything. I got sounds. <laughs> everything. Hey, Jared. Jared's actually got his own podcast, and I was lucky enough to be on it as well earlier. So if you check out the links, you're going to see uh, links to Jared's podcast. Uh, I love I love actually, you know, having the opportunity to, like, you be on mine, I be on yours. Kind of fun to do that. But uh, Dr. Jared Smith is a superintendent in the Iowa area, and I've had great conversations with this man. I uh, really uh, enjoy the, the conversations that we have. And I know as a superintendent, as an educator, um, you've been really inspired by the people you connect with in your own school district, outside as well. But when you look back at your career and you look back at, you know, all the work that you do, like who do you, when you think of a teacher that inspired you, and hopefully maybe as one as a kid, who is a teacher that sticks on your mind and why? Yeah, it's a great question. And you, you had me thinking there when you, when you shared that question ahead of time here, man, there's so many to choose from. But if I had at this point in my life, um, with the kind of the creative work I'm trying to do outside of, outside of the superintendency, mm-hmm. some of the writing, some of the, some of the reading, I got to point back to my seventh grade language arts teacher here in Iowa. We call it language arts. You might call it reading or English, whatever it might be, but she was the first teacher. I remember I, I, I enjoyed creative writing and I always, you know, through grade school, uh, but in seventh grade, we had these chances to write these creative stories Mm -hmm. and she always had this unique, just a super, super nice lady. She's probably, probably about 45 at the time. Um, super sweet, but she pushed me. She encouraged me to, um, to just write about what I was Mm -hmm. passionate about at the time, which was sports (laughs) and at the time, which is still is sports. Um, and kind of used a little bit of humor, but she said, Hey, you know, you, you are good. You are a good writer. Mm -hmm. And then she gave me a chance to read my work in front of the class, you know, which is like the ultimate, the ultimate as a seventh grade student is if you put some work into it, you know, you want to impress your friends. You want to impress the girls in class, whatever it is. Uh, she had, she gave me a chance and she said, you are a good writer. I think to this day, and I, and I'm doing some writing on the side, uh, I, I feel, I point back to that being a a turning point in my life of that seventh grade teacher saying you are a good writer, you've got ability, you should keep doing more of this. Who, who, what's the teacher's name? I, sorry if I didn't say it. Her name is Nancy Bamsey. Nancy Bamsey. Okay, Nancy Bamsey. Shout out. <laughs> so it's, it's actually, um, and it, for those of you who don't know, Jared actually has a book out called Learning Curve, and we're going to talk more about it uh, in our other podcast, but you'll actually see the link in, in the description down below. And to think about, you know, how that teacher inspired you is probably like a huge part of you writing that book. And uh, one of the things that you said, and I think is, uh, I, I share the story often. Do you know who, do you know Rick Riley? Do you know that, uh, that writer, Rick Riley? I know that. Yeah, I know that name. Yeah. So Rick yeah. Riley, actually, it's interesting because you tell the story about like how someone encouraged you to actually share uh, these articles because of your love of sports, you know, your love of writing. And Rick Riley used to write the, uh, the last page article in Sports Illustrated. And, uh, I used to basically sports illustrated would come out. I would run to the library to get it. As soon as it came out, I would check, you know, I would check in like, Hey, where, where is it? Like, why is it not here? And I go right to the back page article and it was Rick Riley article is a one pager. Mm-hmm. And he would tell like a sports story, but he'd have like an emotional connection to it. There'd be sometimes funny. Sometimes you're like crying. And uh, I remember he wrote one about, um, a dad who basically like, carried his son doing marathons and triathlons. Uh, I can't remember. He just actually recently passed away. It's like a really beautiful story. And I used to love that so much, but then I would take that magazine to some of my classrooms and they say, well, that's not, you you can't bring this here. That's not real reading. And I'm like, what do you mean? It's not real reading. Cause it's not a book, right? It's a magazine, but it's interesting how, um, that Rick Riley one page article has influenced a lot of my writing to this day. Right. And it's just like a reminder that, you know, if kids are bringing reading to classroom, whether it's on a magazine, a blog, a graphic novel, like we always got to be the reason that kids go do something, right. You never want to be the reason in spite. And so like, it's great to hear, um, Nancy Bamsey <laughs> getting the shout out button. Um, Love that. inspiring Love me that. too. So, uh, awesome. And now, so Jared, you're actually in a position, you're a superintendent, 
you know, you see so many facets of education. You work with, you know, school boards, uh, you know, and there's leadership there. But I'm sure that your leadership journey, there's an administrator who's inspired you, right? Someone that maybe you learned from when you were a kid, uh, someone that maybe you work with right now. So when you think of that, like when you think about who's an administrator that inspired you and why, like who's the first person that comes to your mind? So I'm going to give you the name to start here so I don't sure. forget. His name was Mark Hansen. Okay. Uh, he was my my ninth grade year. I only had him for one year. He was an assistant principal. Uh, and the thing I remember about him was he just, he was just engaged with the kids. He was at events. He was super, Mm -hmm. you know, he, he knew that I played different sports. I, and and as a freshman, I played football, I played basketball, I played tennis. Like he would have have conversations with me about my games, about the, the things I was involved with. I just didn't remember throughout through K, you know, K through 12. Uh, I don't remember any other administrators really having that one-to-one connection right. with me. And now as a, as a school administrator, I've been an assistant principal, a high school principal, uh, and now a superintendent. I feel like I get just like Mrs. Bamsey, you know, Mr. Hansen, I saw in him what I wanted to be if I ever got to that position. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I want to be like that. I want to, get that school spirit going. I want those kids excited to know that somebody's noticing that the things involved, the things that they're involved with. So I would definitely say one turning point, one person for me would be Mr. Hansen. He was only there for a year and then he left to take a head principal position in a bigger district. And I think there's, a, there's, there's no surprise that he moved on to bigger and better things. Mark Hansen, shout out. So, okay. So I was, I was so praying that you're going to say, he was there one year and then he left to join his brothers and they have the hit song Mbop because he's one of the handsome <laughs> brothers. That's I was, I was hoping that's where that story was. Oh man. <laughs> he, had a, he had a really great opportunity to like, you know, tell a little uh, bit, you know, nobody would have followed That was a up. good song. I'm not going to lie. That was a good it's, song. It's, that's, that's one of my favorites ever. But I, one of the things <laughs> I love about that story and I think is so crucial is that it, you can, even with minimal amount of time that you have in a school, you can make a tremendous impact that will last with someone for a lifetime. Right. And just like that one year, right. It makes me feel better. Like there's some places I was only at maybe two years. So hopefully, you know, I've had that impact. I'm sure I hopefully I've, I always say, I hope I've done more good than bad uh, in my career and been that reason. So that, that, is, that's an awesome story. So um, your book learning curve, uh, this is a perfect interlude to this question. Cause I know you talk a lot about, uh, you know, uh, not only, you know, growth and education, but your leadership, you talk about personal growth. So when you look back at your career, right. And maybe you weren't Mr. Hansen when you first started, right. I'm sure even though you aspire to be, we all should look back on our career. And like, I always think about just how embarrassed I am about some of the things I used to do. And probably there's stuff I'd be embarrassed about right now. 10 years from now. Right. And that's the hope that we continuously grow. So you look back at your first year as an educator who like, uh, what, what advice would you give to yourself? Um, if you can go back, you know, during that first year. So first year as an educator. So first year as a high school teacher, I, and I, and I write about this in the book and I wrote it when I also wrote this or about this in my dissertation too, is, you know, I just did not do a good job of intentionally building relationships with Mm -hmm. students. Uh, It was all about me. I feel like I, you know, I would always talk about topics that were of interest to me. Now, granted, I was 22 year, 22 at the time, 23. Mm -hmm. My high school students were, were freshmen and sophomores. So 14, 15. So we weren't that far off. But everything I, I was a math teacher and everything we talked about, I would spin it into things that were important to me. I would play music in class that, that I liked. Mm -hmm. It was never about the kids. I thought the kids will like what I like, but Mm -hmm. I wish I would have done more that what interested them. Right. Uh, And I just didn't. One more thing on that is I think in college, I was taught that keep your distance from students. Like, don't get too close to them. Don't be too friendly because when you're a high school teacher, there's only that few years of separation. So I also feel like I avoided some of those real in-depth get to know you conversations right. because that's the way I was taught and that's what was modeled. And it took me a while to figure out that that maybe wasn't the best advice. 
Yeah, and like you hear that, you know, like the "don't smile till Christmas" advice, and we've talked about that in the show before. Um, I think I think there's like a beautiful balance. I think that we sh- we kids sh- we should you know share ourselves and share a little personal interests, but I think that is an important aspect. I always say like it's important kids know us, but we got to know the kids, and it's like a reciprocated thing, and you know, just like any good c- connection, any good relationship. Um, I remember actually playing basketball. Um, with my students and th- th- like a lot of times I go outside of the playground and play basketball with them and then I would like go do other things but I actually remember this one uh, person said to me and this is like kind of controversial advice and I but I actually took it to heart they said um, hey you love basketball right kids let kids know you love that and if you ever play them do not ever let them win like if they win they win but don't just like let them win because when they actually achieve that um, they're going to be so grateful that, you know, that they actually, you know, earned it. And like, I remember sharing this and somebody was like pushed back and then they came back years later and said, you know what, I actually started doing that. And it, you know, I saw a difference in, in my kids that, you know, they wanted to, they pushed themselves to kind of grow. And I, like, I know it's like, you know, maybe not everyone agrees with this, but um, <clears throat> that being said, a lot of those kids went on to like one of the, uh, there's these two twins that were in grade seven who ended up playing uh, college basketball in Canada and won the national championship. But, I always beat them in one and one when they were 13 years old. So basically (laughs) I'm like, I'm like, I'm the, I'm better than a Canadian college champion in basketball. (laughs) Right. And they were 13 and I was like 28, but whatever. I still won. Right. (laughs) But yeah, like I, you know, it's just kind of cool to see that kind of grow. And I I really appreciate that. And I love um, the stuff that you're sharing kind of about this personal growth, that connection that you have. And so uh, anyone check out, uh, you can check out Jared's podcast. You're going to see a link to his book and his podcast in the description below. Jared, I know you're super busy. I know like, Hey, during COVID superintendent, you're probably just hiding in your office anyway, not doing anything. Right. (laughs) Just kind of like, I woke you up, probably have like one of the George Costanza, like, you know, sleeping stalls (laughs) under your desk, but I appreciate you, you popping out and, uh, taking the time to connect and, and I hope everyone uh, listening, uh, make sure you connect with Jared. He's absolutely awesome. I love uh, having this conversation and make sure you check out our other podcasts. Jared, thank you so much for being here today. Thanks. Have a good day, everybody.